My name is Jessica. Um, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina in the States. And the reason I came to Nimakaya is because of a few reasons. I've really struggled with depression for, for a long time, addiction as well. In fact, I've been a daily marijuana smoker for <clears throat> 20 years now. And, and then my job as well. I'm, I'm an environmental engineer and I really, really struggle with the meaning and the purpose and the work that I do. And so I feel like um, Nima Kai has been on my radar for a while and just the reviews and the testimonials really felt like this was a space that I needed to come. So I'm glad to give back and do this testimonial. First off, I just want to say this place is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Just the facilitators, there were six here this time. Our angels, like everyone has said in the past. Um, so just a little bit about my experience. There was four ceremonies. My first one, not, not too much happened. I had, you know, I definitely felt the medicine. It's an incredible experience just to be in the Maloka with everyone. There was 19 of us and the shamans and all the facilitators are there. And it's just a very sacred space. And yeah, but, but not too much happened. I had about 20 minutes of experience and and then I kind of held space for everyone. My second ceremony was realizing I was just incredibly tight. My whole entire body was holding all this tension. And I was freezing even though it wasn't cold at all. I couldn't, I couldn't get warm. And some of the advice the facilitators, they tell you just advice of life is just breathe, breathe in, breathe out, just breathe. And anyways, for me, the second one, I finally let my body relax. And I kind of, the rest of the night for me was mostly about love and acceptance and trust and relaxing. Relaxing into the medicine, trusting the space. You know, not everybody's having a, a good time. There's a lot of purging, there's screaming, there's pain. And, but for me in the second one, it was beautiful. I was outside and I was just so happy and I just felt like I could trust myself and I could relax. And it's so much more profound than words can ever explain. I'm just trying to give you my thoughts. But the third one for me is where it took a turn, where this all came together. This is life changing, absolutely, for me. And the third one was very, very, very difficult for me. Um, I felt, you know, we have integration circles, which is a huge part here at Nimakaya. You know, after the nights of the ceremony, the next morning, we all are in a circle and we all kind of share whatever we feel like we you know, comes to us or we want to open up to about our experience as much as we can. And the second, after the, you know, the second integration circle, people had been talking about these loops that they felt that they were stuck in, you know, and a lot of people had been in this suffering state where, you know, suffering to them became sort of a, I guess it's called an ego death, maybe it wasn't, but feeling like they didn't know where their bodies were, they didn't know where they were, and they were in some sort of infinity that they didn't know they could come back to, and that was really scary for them. But they, they mentioned this loop that they were stuck in, this endless loop, and I didn't really understand it. But the third night I did, I was stuck in that loop. 
And the loop for me, I don't really remember exactly everything now. I think it will come back to me as time comes. But what I do remember is when I finally remember to take a breath, it felt like I had been underwater for, for like 10 minutes, you know? And then I'd finally come to the surface and I took the biggest breath ever of my life. And I felt the oxygen going into my lungs and, and, uh, and I just realized, so again, it's hard to explain, but as soon as I realized to breathe and felt the release of breathing, I was again stuck in the mental loop of whatever was going on in my head. And each time it came back around to realize that I needed to breathe, it was a lesson, a big lesson. But it was so visceral and so real, it felt like, I mean, it, it felt like I couldn't breathe, I wasn't breathing, you know, my mind would circle back into these thoughts of, oh my God, this is amazing that ayahuasca, that I'm probably not breathing, I probably was breathing, but not deeply, that ayahuasca is letting my brain survive without oxygen to teach me this lesson. There was no fear that I was going to die. There was no fear of my safety, but, but it was scary. And yeah, so there was this cycle of that. And, and as that spiraled upward and got more intense, and I kept telling myself to come back to that lesson, it felt like something else was happening, like something else was about to come out. I don't want to say too much about the vision I saw, but I know for a fact, absolutely, that there are beings and I think they were my spirit guides watching over me and leading the way and showing me light and then right right at that instant I let out this like blood curdling scream I don't think I could ever reproduce unless I was being torturously murdered I don't know where it came from but it came out of me and then I and then also a big huge thing before I was leading up to that was just over and over telling myself like let it go it doesn't matter let it all go let it all go and all of these things that I'm saying are things that I've always known in my head you know I've always been interested in Eastern philosophy I've I, I'm very you know, I'm not always regular with my yoga, but I've done yoga for years, and I'm interested in meditating. I've never been able to be good at that. A handful of times I've done it. And all these things I've known in my head, but what I was saying to myself and what I knew viscerally with every cell in my being in that moment was to really let it all go because it doesn't matter. You know, a big thing for me about reading about and listening to testimonials with uh, testimonials with ayahuasca was wanting to know what happened to my childhood that I don't really remember and things that I do remember that I want to understand and it doesn't matter it really 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 doesn't matter the mind You know, the mind is a great gift. We're here. We have that for a reason. We, all of this is for a reason. But the mind is a trap. And to not get stuck in it, not get stuck in your thoughts, and to really let it go and just breathe in and just breathe out was absolutely life-changing for me. And, and the way I know it's life-changing is that I don't want to smoke. Like... I have no desire. I struggled after my second ceremony and, you know, just little pockets of, you know, I'm going to go home and I'm still going to have that little urge. What do I do with that urge? I've learned these lessons, but there was still something there. And their life is going to be, um, you know, a, a, a journey and, and, a, and we're going to learn the whole way and it's not like everything is is fine and dandy but but it is <laughs> I just I feel great so in the fourth ceremony it's like mother ayahuasca really knows what we all needed because 
The third night was a wild ride, <laughs> not just for me. It was actually one of the facilitators' birthdays, and I just, it's so funny. I want to say one other thing, you know, the, well, maybe, I forget what ceremony it was, but, you know, these facilitators have this quiet, quiet strength about them, you know? You know, when somebody's just very grounded and you can sense that, and they all have that. And it's like, where did you get that? How did, how did you find that, you know? But in those ceremonies, you just realize, like, why, why they're quiet, why they're breathing, why they're inside themselves, why they're like this, you know? I understand that now. And so, yeah, the fourth ceremony, you know, we were all hoping that, that, you know, it's what we needed, it's a closure, it's love, you know, it's, it's giving us that bit after the hard parts. And it was, it was that for, for everyone, you know, it was, there was bits of hard parts, but it, it, ultimately it was like that for everyone. And the same for me. It was again, like the second ceremony, full of love and full of light and peace and hope and we're all here together to heal each other. I learned other lessons along the way, but those were the main ones. And just to say a few other things about Nimakaya, you know, it's, it's, it's so much more than the ceremonies. There's heart circles that really teach you how to open up your heart. And this morning we had somatic dance therapy, you know, because again, you hear in your head, that we hold tension, we hold emotion in our bodies, we hold pain in our bodies. But I know that's a fact, now I know that for a fact now, and, and to let it go and to dance and to move and to trust. All the things that they incorporate into this program while you're here are all extremely beneficial and, and important. The paintings and the art fair and the boat ride to go, you know, we brewed, the first day we brewed our own ayahuasca. They showed us how to, to crack the vines and to open them up and just to how to make ayahuasca. And um, Each and every person here I feel like was meant to be here. We've all bonded, we've all connected for a lifetime. I can't wait to visit my roommate in London and see where everyone's life goes. So much release, you know. And I, there's just no words of gratitude. There's no words of gratitude for the facilitators and what they've given us. You know, this isn't easy and they provide the utmost safest space, the utmost safest loving space. They all love us and we all feel it. And, uh, and yeah, it just was incredible. I just wanna say thank you to Nimakaya.